In this video, we'll be taking a look on this macro pad. This is called Mark 6. It's a prototype, and uh, I've been using this prototype to kind of get familiar with using some of the functionality that's in the QMK firmware. So QMK, as you may know, is a very popular firmware for custom mechanical keyboards, and uh, that's also what this runs on. So this uh, small prototype is what I've been using to learn my way around QMK as best as possible. And I'll try to explain. I have to disclaim that I'm not a programmer. I do know my way around computers and I do know how to compile the firmware and everything. But a lot of this stuff is just uh, stuff I found on the internet and uh, configured to work uh, the way I wanted it. So uh, basically the macro pad here is uh, six button, six key macro pad. Each key you have the possibility of using either a regular key or a rotary encoder. So for this, this is not entirely assembled as you can see, it has an acrylic case. Um, and this has is configured with one rotary encoder. I also have another one. This one has two rotary encoders and four keys instead. Uh, and this has the complete acrylic case as you can see. I have one final one without any encoders, uh, all, almost without keycaps as well, but, uh, but yeah, just with six keys. And so uh, basically I want to talk a little bit about what, what uh, this particular macro pad does, and then I'll go through the code real fast and explain what I can explain, because some of the stuff I just copy and paste it and I'm not entirely sure of the functionality. Um, so basically, hopefully you can, you can learn a little bit about what you can do with QMK, and, uh, and how to make uh, this particular functionality works. This macro pad has three layers. So it has a primary layer and a function layer, and then it has a system layer, I call it. And on the primary layer, this acts as, the, as kind of the toggle between the primary and the function layer, and as well as the system layer. So that, that, is, uh, that is common for all three layers. Then we have, uh, this is the copy, and this is paste and we have enter and delete. So that's what the, the other four buttons does. Pressing the rotary encoder, that does nothing in this layer, but turning it is the same as holding the control key down and using the mouse scroll wheel. So that's the functionality of the primary layer. Pressing the button here once means it goes to the secondary layer. Now pressing it again means it goes back to the primary. So pressing it once goes to our uh, our function layer, and that is just the arrow keys on these four uh, keys, and then the volume control using the, the left and right on the rotary encoder. Again, pressing it does nothing. Finally, for our third layer, if we hold down this button and uh, keep, keep, it, keep holding it down, then we can cycle through the LED animations. Um, I've equipped this macro pad with these orange switches, so it doesn't make too big of a difference because all of the different animations will have like an orange hue. But if you were using these, these clear switches like I'm doing here, then it would be way more visible what the actual color, color changes were, right? Um, but they, they still do different animations and uh, you can cycle through them doing this. Now, if you press this button, it means the macro pad will go into reset mode, so that means we can then flash new firmware. And so obviously this is very important to have, so you don't have to short the, the connection on the, on the actual PCB to get this functionality. All right, so that's the rotary encoder on layer three. Still holding this down and having layer three enabled. If I press uh, this rightmost button, it means that I will turn the, the LED on and off, so that's just a simple toggle and we have the, can control the intensity on these middle buttons, so up and down, and then this one does nothing on this layer. And releasing the key again means that, that it will just uh, be deactivated. So that is the functionality at its, uh, at its core, and now I'll go through, uh, like I said, some of the code and try to explain at least what I did to make all of this work. All right, so basically there are two files that we need to configure to be able to have this functionality. And the first is rules.mk. Now for the uh, RGB uh, lights, the LED lights, there are two things that we can, two ways we can control these. There's the RGB light, and you can see this is what it, that is called in the rules.mk. This is not enabled because we're using the second option, and that's the RGB matrix. So RGB light is dis disabled, RGB matrix is, is enabled. 
Then in the RGB matrix, there are two different drivers that will work in QMK, and we have to choose which one to use. We've chosen this WS2812, um, and then the final option that we need to configure is this tap dance enable, and that has to be enabled, of course, if we want to use it. So that's the rules.mk, that's pretty simple. Then the second thing is the key map, and um, this is where we actually do all of the, the tap dance functionality and where we can control the LED and, and, uh, and all of the buttons, of course. So basically, I'm not entirely sure how to describe this, but basically this is what we will reference later on to activate different functionality, right? So you can see we have the single tap, we have the single hold, and that's all that we use, right? Single tap to switch between two layers and then simple hold to activate the system layer. Um, but basically we will encounter this further down in the code. So, so let's just leave it, leave it from there. This is just the definition of, of all of these uh, tap dance states. Um, this is what we will use, quad layer. We will use this whenever we need to, uh, to, to call, I guess, some of, the, some of the tap dance functionality. So we will encounter that later on again. And then I'm not entirely sure what the, what, what this, uh, this, this code means. This is, as I remember from example six in the GitHub, QMK GitHub uh, tap dance examples page. So I'll just I'll place that in the video description and you can go have a look, see if you can understand it and then maybe you can explain it to me why it's there. <laughs> um, basically then we define the three layers that we need. So we have the primary layer, that's layer zero, and uh, that's the this top line. Basically, whenever we write uh, underscore MA uh, for main layer, it will just be translated to zero. So for the rest of our code, whenever we write zero, that's the same as as uh, as, as kind of uh, putting focus on the on the main layer, right? And then the function layer is one, and the system layer is two. And then we have the actual key map. For the for the keys, so this is not the rotary encoder. That's the, the part that comes after this, but uh, but this is the actual keys. And like you can see, this is the tap dance, so TD, and then this key that that we defined earlier here. Um, so that's our the, the the left the switch in the top left corner, right? Then for the top middle uh, switch, that is left control, and then uh, control C. So that's the copy. And for the rotary encoder, that's this one, that does nothing. That's the key code you use for doing nothing in QMK. So KC underscore NO. Then bottom left is enter, and then middle left is um, is a copy. No, oh, sorry, is paste, left control, and then V. And then we have delete. So that's all the, the keys that are on the, the primary layer. Then we have the secondary, the function layer. And uh, still we have this, uh, this uh, tap dance key defined here, top left, and then we just have the arrow keys up and then left, down and right in the bottom row. Again, pressing rotor encoder does nothing. And then for the system layer, like I described, uh, this is still the same. So for all of our layers, this is the key we will use. Makes sense, right? Then we have some built-in QMK uh, functionality here. So this is the RGB value increase. And just below that, in the middle uh, bottom row, we have the RGB value decrease. Pressing the uh, rotor encoder on this layer will put it into reset mode. And pressing the button just beneath the, the, the function button that we use does nothing. Uh, finally, the bottom right switch is the RGB toggle, so that will just turn it on and off. So that's all there is to the actual key layer, except for the rotary encoder, and that's what we are, that's what we are doing here. So as you can see, the case zero, that just means if we are on layer zero, then if um, the rotary encoder on index number two, so basically we count from the top left, so the, the, if it was on the top left uh, space, that means that it will be on zero, and then we count one, and then it's on the second one since it, it's on top right. If uh, if this rotary encoder is turned clockwise, we will do the left control held down as well as the mouse wheel up. So that's the code for this. 
For some reason here we have to use tab code 16. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, you can see other uh, other places. It's just it's enough to use tab code. Uh, I'm not sure why it is like that, but uh, but yeah, it is. So basically, if we're on layer zero and the rotary encoder is on the second place, or that's a, so that's the third place really because we come from zero. Then we will do control mouse wheel up or control mouse wheel down, di uh, turning the, the encoder left or right. Now, if we are on the other layer, so the function layer, that uh, and the same, the same is uh, the same place for the rotary encoder. That is just the volume up and volume down functionality. So that's pretty basic, right? And finally, if we're on the third layer, we can do the RGB light step. So again, this is a built-in function that just lets us cycle through the, the different RGB modes. So we can do that uh, forwards or we can do it backwards. And that's all as to the, the encoder functionality. Now for the rest of the code, and it's fairly much, as you can see here, uh, it's actually quite a bit. This is all related to the tap dance functionality. And I'm not entirely sure how to explain like this, this part, but basically, um, basically here we, we can see how we control the function layer. So this is a simple toggle. If, if we do the single tap, that means uh, we, and then, then we check if the function layer is, uh, is on. And if it's on, we turn it off. And if it's off, we turn it on again. So that's, that's, just, a, that's just a toggle. That's all of this code here. And then we have the hold. So basically that means that if we hold the key down, like I described, uh, the system layer will be activated. And then if we release it again, that means that it will go back. And that's actually, I believe, uh, this part of the code, this part of the code that, um, that makes it possible to release it again. At least I believe it's like that, yeah. Uh, I actually ran into this, not defining this, uh, this code properly not turning the system layer off again on releasing the on releasing this uh, this bu this uh, button the switch so and and then then it was able to go into the system layer fine but it was not able to disable it again so that's a bit of a, <laughs> it's a bit of an issue i guess um yeah and uh these these last is kind of the the the, the how fast you have to do to do the double tap or, or whatever functionality you need for, for the tap dance. I've not touched this, like I said, this is just copied from the code that I found on GitHub. So yeah, that is, uh, that is in essence how I made uh, this particular macro pad work. And uh, for me, it was, it was training. Um, maybe you learned something from watching this video or maybe you just got to see a, a cool macro pad. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any suggestions of uh, how I can, I can use QMK better or, or other suggestions, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, all the links are in the, the description. And so uh, enjoy nerding around with the QMK.